Here. Good. I look like a mess. All right. <clears throat> um, should I need to do something different than the fucking intro we always do. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, today we're doing another, um, I don't want to call it a review, it's more of like an initial impressions. Um, the full disclosure, I haven't really used this a whole lot at night yet. We just got back from uh, SHOT Show um, and I just did a time lapse video of me building this out for your viewing pleasure. I don't know where that will end up in the video, but check it out, it's pretty interesting. Um, this, oh, this is the AB Night Vision MGA. So this is very similar to a, an uh, RNVGA, but now uh, it has included provision for manual gain. Uh, like the MH1, it does use the factory ECAG, so they plug right in. Um, there are some interesting things that the guys over at AB Night Vision did with how they clock the tube that I, I found interesting when I was putting it together. Um, unlike other systems, this bridge doesn't have two pins that actually come into the pod and interface with the tube. The tube is clocked in such a way that the ECAG, ECAG, whatever, however you want to say it, is not offset and then uh, kind of snake through at an angle uh, to this hole here in the pod. It's clocked straight up at 12, 12 o'clock through the opening in the pod and the contacts on the tube are offset over here on the side. It, watch the video, it, it might make more sense, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's interesting. I wasn't expecting that when I took it apart, so that's cool. Um, as you've come to expect with the AB Night Vision stuff, I mean, it is super rugged, very simple, uh, super user-friendly. It, it's really just everything you need and nothing you don't. Uh, we like a lot of the all of the AB Night Vision products. I actually met Adam for the first time uh, last week at SHOT Show. Very nice guy, met his wife. Salt of the earth people, can't say enough good things about him. And very receptive to feedback. He, he really um, listens to customers and dealers especially on their thoughts on uh, pros and cons of their products. So hats off to that guy. It was very nice meeting you. If you're watching Adam, uh, I know you're watching because you told me your HR lady said they would never hire me, and I was uh, flattered. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't have a whole lot to say about it. If you've seen our video on the RNVGA, I mean, it's almost exactly the same with the exception of having manual gain, which, as you know, if you've been following along, we're big fans of. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it. We got a new scale. It's fancy. Um, is it on? There we go. It's on. Um, lots of numbers. Okay, it's zeroed out. 632, 623 rather, 0.23 grams. Now this is built out with um, Noctis optics and L3 filmless tubes. So uh, the optics choice obviously plays a part. Uh, we will build this out and other configurations to come and post all of those weights on the website like everything else we sell. Bonus footage time. Uh, I just happen to have an RMVGA built out on the shelf that has uh, the same tubes, same optics, uh, same color. So I figured why not film a little segment where we look at them side by side. I mean, <clears throat> the pods look almost exactly the same. Um, yeah, I don't really see any major differences. There's there's a few extra places here where there's more material. And from my experience putting it together, I know why those are there. The tube contacts are in here. Um, obviously, the front of the bridge is different. Where the original RNVGA has a power button on the bottom and an IR illuminator with a gate around it at the top. The 
MGA has a knob up top that, as we discussed, uh, controls functionality of on and off and the gain with the IR button down here at the bottom. The back of the bridge looks to be exactly the same. The remote power port's in the same position. The battery cap is in the same position. This is a cool thought. If I didn't cover it in videos before, having the, ba the battery cap on the back of the goggle is really pretty smart uh, for changing on the fly because when you have the goggle stowed up on your head, as you would probably when you're changing the battery if you don't want to take it off the mount, when you release the cap up here, the battery just falls out into your hand. Super convenient. Um, I don't know why more people haven't thought of that. I thought that was a cool idea. Um, yeah, but other than that, everything's about the same. So it has a single knob control, uh, similar to the RVM14. There's a hard stop with a detent for the off position. And when you turn past that, you hear an audible click and then you keep turning it and that actually brings the gain down. So you start at max gain, right past the audible on off click, start at max gain. And then as you turn it down, it reduces the gain. The knob feels very, there's good resistance to it. It doesn't feel mushy. Uh, the knob itself is made out of a plastic, so. but it is, um, it's not soft or squid. Okay. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel 3D printed. It's a quality piece. The potentiometer in it feels quality. Like I said, there's good resistance with a detented positive snap from on to off. Um, there's an, a button here right underneath for the IR illuminator. Um, it's not overly squishy. It's not, it doesn't have as much uh, force to overcome the snap of the button as like a Manicore does, but it's completely suitable for uh, what it does. Uh, one of the things that Adam asked me about at SHOT Show was whether or not this button should be gated. I told him, I don't really care, but if that's something that you feel like needs to be done on a revision of this housing in the future, put it in the comments and let us know. We're going to uh, continue evaluating this and using it. You know, we don't really need to. I'm, I'm sure that uh, he's got it sorted out because all of his other products have been completely sorted out from the jump. But <clears throat> we will use it and, you know, provide any feedback either here on YouTube or through our show, social media. So just stay tuned. If, if, if you're unaware, uh, if you didn't see the video on the uh, RMVGA video, all these housings have the provision for remote power via a standard Limo port here. Uh, it's in an interesting position, but it's a very uh, well thought out position. Basically, the cable runs well up above your eyepieces and it keeps it kind of along the brim line of your helmet, which is nice. I can't think of really anything else to say about it. S seems like a solid option. Um, I'm not sure what these are going to be priced at, but I mean, honestly, guys, the housings are getting so close in price, at least the ones made out of some sort of metal, um, that that's not really a determining factor. It's kind of like, what flavor suits your personality? <laughs> at this point. Uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, we might have answers as we continue to evaluate it. Call us, email us, you know, hit us up on any of the social medias. Subscribe to our channel, like it, share it, all that stuff. We really appreciate you watching. Have a great day.